What's good guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody's having a great week so far. This is episode eight of a 13 part series where I take you through every step of creating an attention grabbing nightclub after movie slash party video recap. Today we'll be talking about this super quick and simple style of video I've seen become more and more popular by artists and DJs like Fisher, Wax Motif, and more. This is not only a great way to add value to your video packages when talking to a client, but also a great way for an artist or DJ DJ to turn around something to their loyal fan base within 10 to 12 hours of their event. You can turn this around super quick and it works so well because it really captures a genuine and raw experience of what it was like to be at that crazy event. Now this doesn't just have to be a social media post for the client. You can also take this style of video, throw it into your own recap, spice it up a little bit and this is how I've done it in the past. Let's jump into Premiere Pro and check out how I just spiced up those regular social media posts and included it in my edit right now. Throw a black and white filter on there, some 4K old grain scratches, some eight millimeter grain. Transition into this live clip with like a little FWGFX transition in the effects tab. It looks like a camera shutter. Add the actual audio of the events. Fade it in a little before the clip starts like this. It starts now and you heard some audience cheering before that took place and this is what it really looks like on my timeline. I wanted to add too that authentically this is a great way to showcase what it was like to be at the event. But also if you're struggling to meet deadlines and you promised a 45 second video and you're at about like 25 to 30 seconds and you're running out of footage, this is a great way to go and meet that 45 second deadline. It's a little bit sneaky and you can chop it in but it does get the job done. And it fills up a bunch of time but you can't just include it plain and boring like those social media posts that we showed at the start of the video. This is how I included it in another example and spice it up. We'll watch a little bit of the start and then how we transition into it now. This is about 10 seconds long. And it really adds to the value of the video. So it doesn't just seem like I was trying to get by and just extend the length of the video to meet that deadline. And the best part about including something like this in your edit is it's very simple. All you're gonna need is anywhere between an eight to 16 millimeter lens, preferably with a lower aperture. And if you're curious as to which lenses are my favorite or which ones I use to make something just like this, you can check out the top link in the description where it'll bring you back to episode one, where I talk about all of my favorite ultra wide angle lenses. But really anything between an 8 to a 16 on a full frame camera will do the trick. Then utilizing that lens all you have to do is throw a color grade on it and it's ready for those social posts just like we saw with Fisher and Wax Motif. I honestly think this is a great incentive and deliverable to tack on when you're working with an artist or client and trying to charge X amount for your video package. You're adding value providing something that they can post within two to three hours of their event. This is also going to require minimal work on your end. An example of this would be like a video you see on the screen saying that I'll include X amount of these sorts of videos per week that you can post right after your event. I'll include X amount of photos, three one minute show recaps per week. And then lastly, one recap that spans the entire week and everything that you guys did throughout it. But besides that, if you're looking to do more than just include it in a social post for the artist or DJ you film for, let's go over how I've included in my videos, how it'll save you time and how to do it effectively. Taking a look at how I did it into this project, let's check out some things that I took into account. First of all, if we open up this nested sequence, this is the entire clip that we'll be looking at. And you can see that it's broken up into a total of four videos that I filmed at different times and just made it look really seamless. It's actually on the eight mil and the 16 mil. So two entirely different lenses and it takes time to switch lenses. So you can see that we did this twice over the span of two different nights that we were at the venue, but I just made it look like one. We start off by fading in the noise of the actual audio. So you want to make sure you have that recorded on a good mic. And then we also have this camera shutter effect like we talked about before this WGFX transition that kind of makes it known that we're moving into a different clip because it kind of closes that off. We've included that with a camera close sound effect. We've also done this at the end. You can hear that. Bam. 
right there. And sometimes what I'll do too is add crowd sound effects in this to make it sound more energetic, but I didn't need to in this case just because the crowd was full of energy for this song. We also added some energetic camera zooms when it was necessary. Like for this, I'm just trying to capture the DJ and what's going on. So I'm not trying to add too much camera movement, but then when we're in the crowd, we're moving the camera quick, zooming in and zooming out. I've also added different overlays as well as to showcase that this is different from the rest of the video and that this was really captured live and this is what it was like to be there. The black and white distinguishes that for me. I've thrown this matte on the video as well, which kind of adds to that effect, just adding different kinds of assets. We've added film grain to really sell that effect. I added some VHS overlays, which you can see right here. I've added some black and white to that as well. This is what they actually look like. But since we did everything in black and white, I decided to make these black and white too, just to really sell that effect. It looks like on this video as well, to make it choppy and seem like it was really filmed on an old camera, I added a posterized time effect, which you can find in the effects panel, as well as the black and white effect too. And what this does is it allows you to skip frames. So I made, instead of the frame rate being at 24 frames per second, I at, I made it seem 15. So it seems like choppy. And then for the sound effects too, if we isolate all of the sound, we can hear a riser right here on audio layer five. And then on audio layer six, we can hear a bass hit, which is also selling the effect of now we are moving into a different part of the video. So let's hear what that sounds like without anything else now. Three, two, one. Bah. One more time. And then towards the end, I did it as well. Distinguishing that we're moving into the next part. If we hear that all together, it kind of just blends in super seamlessly. So let's hear it one more time all together. The overlays, the scratches. that riser and that bass hit right here and then right back into the song. I've also chopped up the audio to kind of make it sound like it's breaking when we move into this. I just simply put my mouse on the video clip and then I press A to cut, which is on my keyboard. And then I kind of just deleted a couple of the frames in between, something like this. And we can hear that now. So it kind of sounds like ah, yeah, breaking up like that. And if we pay attention to that now, this is what that sounds like just by itself. as opposed to just hearing this. It's really all about making it different and just adding tiny little things to really sell the effect and make it look like it's distinguished from the rest of the video, making it super special. And if you thought this effect was dope and you might wanna include this in one of your future videos, I have a bunch of other effects and transitions on my channel that I dedicate entire videos to breaking down that I wanna make sure you guys check out. This being a photo burst transition where we burst a bunch of photos in a super cool way and it really grabs attention inside of your video. And then a magazine rip, which you'll just have to check out for yourself because it's dope. I'll leave links to those effect transitions at the top of this description as well. But with that being said, I'm going to wrap up the video here. If you guys enjoyed episode eight, make sure to check out the rest of the videos in the playlist right here. And you're going to want to stay tuned for the next episode because it's a big one. We're going to talk about speed ramping, which is my all time favorite technique. Anyway, you'll have to check it out for yourself and let me know what you think. But that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video, Thursday, 11 a.m. AST. Peace.